All right, we are pleased to welcome a guest here to The Edge. Paco Farias is the writer, co-writer of a new movie coming out on April 12th. It is called The Long Game. Paco, we are happy to have you here. Tell me a little bit about the genesis of, of this movie and why our audience uh, will be interested in it. I think the, the movie started out uh, as a book, uh, by, like you said, by Humberto Garcia. Uh, when he he was a graduate of uh, San Felipe High School in Del Rio. And San Felipe High School has a particular um, uh, moment in history because uh, it was one of the last schools to be des- uh, de- desegregated in, in Texas. And Humberto was a senior at San Felipe High that year. So his senior year was the first year they... They, they combined the Del Rio schools and the San Felipe schools. This is Del Rio, Texas, a border town about two and a half hours southwest of San Antonio. And there was an event, there was a golf event, like I think it was in 2008, and he went down to play. And when he was there, they introduced these four guys as the Texas 1957 Texas State champions in golf. And Umberto was like, What? Who? Why? You know, how did they win? How come I? How come I don't know anything about their story? And so right away, you know, and Roberto's a lawyer here in San Antonio. He got it into his head, his head that someone should write about their story, and he uh, interviewed them and and videotaped them, and they started telling him all these amazing things that happened while they were, you know, going to school in in, in Del Rio, Texas, in 1957. And um, he he turned it into a book, and then at some point, um, uh, it was picked up by a gentleman named Javier Chapa, who is the producer of the movie. Around 2017, like almost Christmas of 2017, he said, "Hey, you play golf, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, whenever whenever I can. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it playing. I, I, I would call it, you know, enjoying." <laughs> He said, "Hey, would you do you want to take a look at this book for me? I, I just got the option, and I, I want to adapt it into a screenplay. Read it, and let me know what you think." And I said, "Okay," and uh, read the book and loved it. Loved the story. Loved the history. They they not only won; they just they won like by thirty five strokes. Hmm. They held they held the record for a good many years until like I think the early nineteen nineties or late eighties. Benjamin Bratt's agent also represents Jay Hernandez, who was doing Magnum at the time. And he was like, you know, I think this is great. I think, you know, who also might like to read this would be Jay. And so they sent it to Jay Hernandez. And he, like, I think he has family from Del Rio. So mm-hmm. he took a, he got attached to it right away. And once that happened, the, once Jay Hernandez said, yeah, I want to, I love this. I want to do this role. That's when things got really, truly serious. And it, that's when the project kind of felt like it was good. It was going to happen. You know, it's it's crazy. It's crazy how 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 audiences are are reacting to the movie. I'm really really excited for the for the for the general release. In the last two weeks, I've got your trailer sent to me by like four or five different people. It's, it's crazy. My fiance sent it to me. You know, a coworker of hers that that knows I'm in the golf industry sent it to her, mm-hmm. and it's just you know. Then another friend from Phoenix sent it to me, and then all of a sudden Scott's like, "Hey, by the way." You know, we're to, we're talking with Paco, and I was like, "Sweet, right?" So it's you know, it seems like it's about to get you know about to get nuts. Yeah. On so so making a, a movie about a, a golf team, right? Mm-hmm. And and a Hispanic golf team in in Texas and everything. How you know? How do you guys go about getting people that actually know about golf? I mean, did the actors have they played much? What was their background? You know, did you bring in instructors? How did you know? How does that whole behind the scenes work? I I know that they were playing, <laughs> they were playing golf all the time, and I know mm-hmm. they had some. I know I think there was a couple actors who didn't, who hadn't played. So there was there was definitely um, coaching involved. Right. But I only got to go to the set um, when they were filming in Bastrop, and uh, there's a course out there where they shot the Country Club, and I don't know where that where that uh, what the name of the course is, but. <clears throat> On that day on set, it was great because Julian, the lead, who plays Joe Trevino, would like shoot a scene, right? And he's like, okay, I'll be right back. And so he would go and he'd go play like two or three holes, 
you know, and then he'd get cleaned up and then come back and work some more. And it's like, do you still need me? No, no. Okay. And he would go back and, and just keep, you know, playing and working on his swing and just, I mean, just, you could see how much and it, to the point where they're like, no, you can't, you can't play right now. We need you. We're going to need you here. And like, you know, he's like, ah, oh, you know, so, and I know that, I know Dennis is a, is a, is a big time golfer and a, a really good golfer, I think. Um, and so he got to, I think he got to play a little bit while they were not, while they were not shooting. No, my thing is at any time, did you guys think it just flat out wasn't going to happen or did that happen multiple times? All the time. All the time. It was like, oh, it was just a series of setback after setback. It just, there was a, you know, just kind of, you know, which is a lot like the character of the, of the kids in the movie, right? You know, they could, they had to keep, keep going, you know, they had to keep going. And there's a, there's a line in the movie about like, you have to keep your eye on the flag. As long as you know, as long as you can see the flag, you know, where you're, you know, what you're shooting for and you know, you know, you just got to keep going towards it. Right. And I think that was kind of how we kind of how we made the movie. Just by keeping our eye on that flag and realizing that this story needed to be told, it's a miracle when a movie gets made, right? And it's an it's another miracle when a movie gets seen. <laughs> so you know, and they talk they talk about lightning in a bottle, and it's it's true. There's so many things that can deter uh, production in a film, right? And there's so many things that can go wrong after <laughs> production starts, you know. And so to have something that's finally out there and that hopefully people are enjoying is a, is a, is just a series of miracles that, you know, that I, I, I do my best not to take for granted. And, so what's uh, the one thing you want? What's the one thing you want people to take out of this movie once they've seen it? That's a good question. Um, I think, I think, you know, as a Latino, Right, as a Latino, as a Hispanic, I I, I feel like, it, you know, one of the things that I is a I feel responsible in like trying to tell stories that help change the narrative. Right, I want us to sh I want us to show us in this sort of positive, not sort of in a positive light, and show the 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 ability of our culture to persevere and to keep going forward and to keep striving for the you know. An opportunity to, to to say we we belong here, and I think this movie is a great uh, example of that. Well, we definitely appreciate the time. Thanks for coming on and, and talking about this. Paco Farias, the movie is the long game. Premieres on April twelfth. Go see it, all of our right. Edge fans. Paco, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate the invitation. <laughs>